Thank you, Sean, and thank you to um, the Guild Hall as well. Um, uh, Sean's colleagues, particularly Sean and Iona, have been absolutely brilliant to work with. Um, they've been a joy, they've been infinitely patient with us um, and really generous with their time. So as Sean says, I'm Linda Bryant, I'm the Chief Executive of Together, and I'm delighted to welcome you all here this evening, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are unique, and dare I say wonderful, um, because you are the first audience at our first annual lecture um, in what will be a series going forward. Um, we want to explore what inspires us, what gives us hope, and what ultimately positively impacts our mental well-being. And thinking about what inspires me and gives me hope was the topic of a really lovely conversation I had recently with my partner, Teresa, who is also the photographer. Um, I thought I'd pull on my uh, personal networks, um, on a long and very uninspiring um, traffic-fueled car journey. Um, and I have to say that um, Teresa is someone that has been an inspiration to me over a number of years, and sometimes in directions um, I didn't quite anticipate, but nevertheless always stretching what's possible. So I did just want to say thank you to my partner, Teresa. Um, but in answer to Teresa's question about who truly inspires me, without a doubt, it is definitely the people we work alongside in our services at Together. I'm so thrilled that there are a number of people in the audience tonight that have come from, from far afield to join us. And when I speak to them, and if you get an opportunity to talk to any of the people that use our services tonight, then please do. Because when I speak to them and listen to their journeys, the difficult life experiences that they've had and how they've overcome some great adversities, they truly inspire me. And when I ask them what has helped them the most, it's about relationships, the actions, behaviors, the values of others, the, um, who have been kind, gentle, caring, thoughtful, reliable, and constant, those everyday contacts um, as part of everyday life um, that has given them hope and hope when sometimes the road has been really rocky um, and they haven't given up in turn. And those relationships also include my colleagues at Together working across the organization. And again, I'm so pleased that so many of them are here tonight. Um, they not only inspire the people we work with, um, but they also inspire me that as an organization, we can create places of hope and of sanctuary. Um, whether that's speaking with someone in the cells of a magistrate's court, in their own homes, in hospital, or supporting them at a time of sadness when everyone else has gone home. And I know from speaking with people in our services who have created some of the wonderful artwork that you see in the foyer, they were able to find inspiration through their creativity due to feeling safe and supported by staff and volunteers being alongside them. So I just wanted to say a few words about Henry Hawkins. Um, we are holding these lectures in the name of our founder, the Reverend Henry Hawkins, and this is Henry here. Um, over 140 years ago, he inspired the local community near to the asylum where he was the chaplain. He reached out to the local citizens who in turn reached in um, to the women and men in the asylum. And it was at a time when wider society had really turned their back on thousands of people who were often destitute, who may be um, single, unmarried mothers, who were just poor. Um, and he gave them hope um, by um, working with people in the community, and they reached out, offering people a place to live, a meaning and purpose to life, and really importantly, friendship. Henry was brave and courageous, as were the volunteers who offered help. In modern day terms, he understood that to experience mental distress was a health and social care issue, not to be stigmatized, attract prejudice, and not acts of criminality requiring incarceration. And what never ceases to amaze me is how strongly that history resonates with us today and continues to inspire others. 
and the donation we received from Sir Anthony Gormley, the sculptor, um, and his print is out in the foyer, um, and the White Cube Gallery that works with him, um, is funding this event. Um, and that donation came at a time when we needed to feel some hope. We were in the early months of grappling with COVID, um, the unknowns of what was going to happen, worrying about people, uh, keeping people safe and well in our services. This is why we want to hold events like this that remind us of the importance of the positive acts that we can all have on each other's mental well-being by, by acts and behaviours that inspires and gives people hope. So I just want to finish because there's one more thank you, which is when you arrived, you were um, hopefully could pick up a little notebook. Um, that notebook is um, made by Colin Stebden, the stationers, um, through um, a specific initiative called Jumble & Co. And they are selling those notebooks. You've got them for free. Um, they are selling those notebooks um, and giving part of uh, that money to you together as well. So um, we really appreciate their support. So I'm going to stop because it's not me you've come to listen to, and I'm going to introduce our first speaker. So um, Dr. Simon Hackett um, has travelled all the way down from Newcastle uh, to be with us tonight, where he is the Honorary Senior Clinical Lecturer in Mental Health at Newcastle University. Simon's background is in art, psychotherapy, and he's worked in the NHS for over 20 years. Simon's mental health research interests include the arts therapy, so it was very um, interesting what Sean was saying, uh, arts therapies across the board, art, drama, dance movement and music, arts participation, arts and health, intellectual and development disabilities, young um, uh, and children and young people's mental health, um, and also working to address mental health inequalities. So tonight, Simon has promised, we're holding him to that, um, to give us stories of hope, recovery, and agency from his unique perspective. Simon.